Since last April, I've been on this intense journey of like wanting to get to the truth and wanting to find out the facts. And the more that I've found, the more horrified and terrified I've become and the more dedicated I've wanted to make my life about making sure that the public know the truth. I'm Dr Emily Grossman, I'm a science communicator and I came along to the first Extinction Rebellion protest last April 2019. Yeah, my name's Zephyr, I'm part of Extinction Rebellion Legal Support. I joined in November 2018. From you know that point onwards, I've just started educating myself more and more, realising that this is the issue that underscores everything. There's no such thing as trying to fight for social justice without trying to fight for climate justice. It's going to break down uh, political establishments, potentially wars are going to you know, arise over this, lack of food, lack of water, mass migration. It's going to be potentially horrific unless we do something very quickly. And I came along really knowing very little about the climate and ecological crisis and I got on the streets and I was wanting to be supportive and I was seeing everybody with all their slogans and their banners saying you know mass extinction and people are going to die and civil unrest and you know, the world is ending and all this and I was just like really is this actually this bad because I thought okay if it were really this bad, then surely it would be on the front page of every newspaper, it would be on every news report. The politicians who are supposed to be in charge here, they would be doing something about it. It's, we're not being listened to, it's already bad, it's getting worse, there's already people suffering and a lot more people are going to suffer. There's already people in places across the world suffering from huge amounts of flooding and droughts and monsoons and heat waves and even here in the UK. We need to educate our young people, we need to make changes personally, we need to try and get the government to make changes and we need to adapt because it's coming and it's going to happen and there are going to be catastrophic impacts. And I do still have friends and family who don't think it's this bad and who think I'm a bit crazy um, and, and there's so much misinformation and information out there that's actually wrong and that's really damaging. Yeah, it's tough to be an activist and yeah, it's tough to be working in this environment. No, it's not even working, you know, there's very little money involved. But actually, there's no way I'm going to stop. I can't. I, I, I can't do that to the future generations. And at the very least, you know, try and form sort of resilient communities with people who feel the same, you know. Even if we never are able to affect the macro changes that are needed, at least being able to bandy around. <laughs> it sounds a bit bleak and dystopian, but, you know, with those who, who feel the same way and, you know, kind of go down with a little bit of, uh, of collective solidarity at the end is, is my slightly bleak fantasy. <laughs> I think XR has really shown though that people, what it's like when people come together and what it's like when people actually um, get together behind an issue. We've got so many different people in XR from so many different backgrounds and environments and education and professions. You've got activists from all parts of the, the world coming together for a common cause and I think that's actually been a really beautiful experience to show what human beings can do when they come together in this way. I think though that coronavirus has shown that humanity has the ability to pull together and make massive changes and I think that is what's really being shown right now is that when we really get something as a threat people take action, people do stuff because of the scale of the risk and the thing is the risk posed by the climate and ecological crisis is many orders of magnitude larger than the risk posed by coronavirus but the thing is our brains can't really comprehend that risk because it's so abstract but with coronavirus we can see it we see it unfolding it's short term we can see what's going to happen and people are okay with that because they can see the risk that they are taking if they don't do it with the climate and ecological crisis it's more abstract it's further down the line at least in a lot of countries it is happening right now but we need to show the government that as as citizens that we are prepared to do the changes that the government needs to see that the people are behind them, that they're willing to make changes, and then hopefully if we can convince them to make changes top down, then everything will move forward.